What's going on guys? This is the 9mm slash 357 AEA Terminator and this is listed as the world's most powerful semi-automatic air gun and it is by far the coolest air rifle I've ever seen in my life. Modern air guns are changing the game as far as the capabilities you can get out of these things and until now I've never had an air gun bigger than 22 caliber so I am pumped to try this thing. So the Terminator is a $1,200 9mm slash 357 semi-auto air rifle. They also offer these in 30 cal, but I wanted the bigger 9mm version, and the advertised velocity on this thing is over 900 feet per second, which I assume is with the best ammo in perfect condition. So we probably won't get that, but for an air rifle, that is extremely powerful. Now, one of the most appealing qualities of air guns is that these are not technically considered firearms, which means they do not require a background check. Shout out to all my convicted felons watching the channel. Um, in my opinion, if you've served the time, you should be able to buy guns and protect your family just like the rest of us, but unfortunately you can't. And I know none of you would ever break the law. And I'm gonna do a video on that topic very soon, but today we are gonna try the world's most powerful production semi-automatic air rifle and see what this thing can actually do. This is the magazine. It holds 10 rounds and the way it works is kind of interesting. It's a similar concept to a drum mag. So it's under spring pressure and you have to rotate that plastic piece on the top and hold it in place while you load the first round. And then that keeps the spring from releasing so you can flip it over and load the others. We're gonna start with five because I don't wanna waste too many shots on targets that aren't fun. This is a dual tank rifle and they say you can get 40 shots off of a full tank. So we'll see how close we can get to that. And to load it, you pull the bolt back, insert the magazine and push it forward. We're gonna start with no ear protection. I don't think I'll need it. I did dry fire this in the house and scared the crap out of everybody. So indoors, it is loud, but I don't think it'll be too bad out here. Very first shots, let's see how it feels. <laughs> that is screaming fast. <laughs> that sounds like a suppressed nine millimeter. I mean, you guys can hear how fast that's getting to the target. That is awesome. Well, I've never experienced anything quite like that. So clearly the bullet impact is like 10 times louder than the gunshot itself. It kind of reminds me of a suppressed firearm shooting subsonics, but even way quieter than that. And as you could hear, those bullets are getting there instantly. Now, one complaint that I have right off the bat is the butt stock. If it looks like I'm chicken winging this thing, it's because the stock is so thick, obviously because there's a giant air tank in it that it kind of forces your elbow out and you can't really bring it up into your shoulder pocket. You have to bring your cheek down to the stock and it basically just forces bad shooting posture. But that's my only complaint so far. All right, let's do some tests with this bad boy and see what it's capable of. We're gonna start with a water jug penetration test. And for this one, we're using the 81 grain FX air gun, nine millimeter pellet. Hey guys, before we go any further, I wanna thank Core Essentials for sponsoring today's video because they are the reason it was possible for me to buy the Terminator air gun for you guys. So they sent me a couple gun belts probably a month ago now, and I have been wearing them every day since. I have one on right now, and I have the leather version in my hands right here. And trust me, I am very picky about gun belts these will not disappoint you. So there's a few different options to choose from. This is their 1.5 inch leather gun belt, which is perfect for dress clothes if you don't wanna look like you're tactical and carrying. And this is their tactical nylon belt, which does look more like a gun belt. But both of these have the same ratchet system, which is possibly my favorite thing ever, and the reason that these are now my go-to gun belts. Core Essentials was the first to create reinforced ratchet belts designed specifically for firearms. And if I flip it to the inside here, you can see the track that is sewn in the back. And this is by far my favorite thing about these belts. So what it allows you to do is adjust the belt in quarter inch increments. And there are over 40 size points on this thing. So throughout the day, when you need to adjust your belt a little bit in or a little bit out, now you can do it in quarter inches instead of having to go a full inch up 
or a full inch down. Now that I have tried this ratchet system, I will never go back to anything else. Core gun belts are the best fitting, most comfortable concealed carry belt you will ever wear. And if you don't agree with me, they have a 30 day money back guarantee and a one year warranty. So visit the link in the description box below to check them out. And again, thank you Core Essentials for sponsoring today's video and for sending me two awesome gun belts. And there's water jug number one laying on the ground. That's kind of trippy. There's a hole in the front and in the back, but it's not leaking. It's just a full water jug laying on the ground. Can't explain that one. If we go up onto the table, here is water jug number two, and it is leaking. That's for sure. You can see the entrance hole right there. And it actually went through the second water jug as well. So here's number three, and I can see the pellet. Don't piss on me on the bottom of that water jug. Hopefully you guys can see it as well. So straight through two and into the third. That is not bad for an air gun. I think a real nine millimeter would probably go through four or five, but that's still a lot of penetration. Well, two of those punctured water jugs are not leaking. So kind of weird, but we're gonna take advantage of it and test another round. This is the 81 grain poly mag. And you can see the difference between that and the other pellet that we just shot. I think this one is designed to expand, do more damage, and penetrate less. So let's see how it does. Man, that hits hard. And that one went in right there, pretty much emptied that first water jug. And you can actually see the red polymer tip in the bottom of that first jug. And if we look at the second one, it did go in. Once again, these jugs are not really leaking. It's the strangest thing I've ever seen. But back here, hopefully you can see that pellet on the bottom of that second water jug. So a little less penetration than the first pellet that we shot, which makes sense. And at least to my ears, that one sounded like it hit quite a bit harder and made a much louder sound on impact. Well, there's one water jug left on the table, so let's go ahead and finish it off. This is a nine millimeter hollow point hybrid slug. And apparently these are the most effective air gun rounds. Not all air guns are designed to shoot them. And I honestly don't know if this one is, but it is the right caliber. So we'll give it a shot. They say if you're shooting long range with an air gun, you want to use slugs, so probably won't help us at seven yards, but we'll try it. Man. I think that one blew right through, and unfortunately, we're not going to recover it, but I would love to see what that looks like expanded. went in right there and straight out the other side. Now this is the only bullet we have left that I haven't shot. It is the JSB 35 Diablo and it is a very interesting looking pellet. Let's put it on a clay pot and see what it does. One thing I worry about with air guns is bullets coming back, but so far we seem to be doing all right. Yes. <laughs> it's powerful enough to smoke the pot, that's for sure. All right, let's take a look at this thing and how it works. We'll go tip to butt Garantham style. So the barrel is 20 inches long and it does have a removable barrel shroud that you can twist off. And there's actually some integral suppression going on in the barrel. Underneath that, we have our first air tank. This gun does have two, one in the back and one up front to fill it. You just pop this little cap off and that exposes your hole. And when you fill it with air, it does fill both tanks simultaneously. On the front of the first tank is your pressure gauge, so you know how much air is in the rifle. Moving back, there is a power adjustment knob right here in front of the magazine well, so you can actually adjust how fast you want this gun to shoot. Of course, I'm just gonna leave it on the highest setting possible because I'm trying to do maximum damage over here. Behind that is the magazine well. To load a magazine, you pull the charging handle back, 
insert the mag, run it forward, and it chambers around. The trigger is not great, not terrible. It's probably nine or 10 pounds, so very heavy. Actually, when I first got the gun, I was testing out the trigger and I dry fired it in my house and scared the crap out of everybody. So it is pretty loud indoors. If I flip it over, you can see our safety right above the trigger guard. To put it on fire, you push it forward, put it on safe, you pull it back. We have a charging handle here. I put a Vortex one to four power scope on this one so that does not come with the gun. The grip is very nice, rubber, finger grooves, feels good in the hand and then at the very back, we have our second air tank and our butt stock. That's pretty much it. I like the design. It is a very heavy rifle, probably because it has two air tanks, but that's the price you pay if you want 40 plus shots in a semi-automatic air gun. So I would rather have it than not. All right, now I wanna chronograph each of these pellets and see what velocities we're getting. They advertise 950 feet per second, but we all know how advertised velocities work. Honestly, if it gets anywhere close to that, I'll be impressed. We're gonna start with the 81 grain target load. And since air is limited, we're just gonna shoot one of each and whatever number we get, that's what we're going with. It's not the correct way to chronograph, but that's what we're doing. 809. I gotta say, for an air gun, that is still very impressive. That's about what I was expecting, somewhere between 800 and 850, maybe with the perfect ammo and the perfect conditions, you could get over 900, but 809 is not bad. Next up, we're gonna try the 81 grain JSB Diablo. This is a hollow point, but it's also a match grade pellet, so maybe it'll give us better velocity. 820, and the poly mag, by far the coolest looking one out of them all. Again, if we did this correctly with three to five shots per round, we would probably be getting some higher numbers, but I don't have any air to waste. Ain't nobody got time for that. 801, now for shits and giggles, let's try one right at the muzzle because those others were like 10 yards away. Please don't bounce back at me. 827, not a big difference. Well, I have one more to chronograph that I almost forgot about, the 64 grain hollow point slug. It is lighter weight than the other pellets that we shot, and they say these slugs perform much better and retain energy further down range. So I wanna give it a shot. At five feet away, we're not gonna see the long range difference, but I do wanna see what kind of velocity we're getting. 814. Let's try one more a little bit closer. 832. Well, I can't remember what our fastest pellet was, but it seems like they were all pretty similar. But supposedly from what I've read, the slug would retain that velocity at a much longer range. So that's the main advantage to them. All right, guys, grocery store was out of watermelon, so we went with honeydews. We are gonna shoot each of these melons with a different pellet and see which one does best. First up, we have the 81 grain target round. Start with that one on the left. Well, looking at that hole, I feel like if that was a watermelon, it probably would have exploded. That's better than I thought it would do. Next up, we have the poly mag with that cool red polymer tip. This was actually the slowest one on the chronograph, which kind of surprised me because it looks like it would be fast. Melon number two with a steel target right behind it. Wow. Much bigger difference than I was expecting. And last but not least, El Diablo. This is the one that I thought would probably do the best, but after seeing the poly mag, I don't know. That was impressive. Go for that one all the way to the right. See what it does. <laughs> okay, without a doubt, the Diablo threw chunks of that melon much further than any of the others. I was getting hit all the way back here, but I still think the poly mag left the biggest hole. I don't know, after watching the slow-mo, the Diablo was very impressive as well. So let's take a look 
at each of these melons. This was the first one that we shot with the regular target load, and you can see not bad, but definitely not as impressive as the others. That is our entrance hole there, and then a slightly larger exit hole on the back. The second one that we shot was the polymag, and that is four to five times the size of the first one. I mean, that is a massive entrance hole. It also completely cut that melon in half, and you can see the damage that it did in there. So very impressive. And then the third one was the Diablo. That one I think looked the coolest on the slow-mo. It's kind of hard to tell out here in the sun, but it was also very impressive. You can see the uniformity in the way that it split that melon in every direction. Also completely cut it in half right there along the top. And of course did a bunch of damage on the inside as well. If you go around to the back, both of these have smaller exit holes than they do entrance holes, which is kind of interesting. So I'm assuming since it's an air rifle, when the pellets go through something like a honeydew melon, they are losing energy by the time they exit out the back. So the exit hole is actually smaller. Whereas with a real gun, that is not the case. Usually the exit hole is much bigger than the entrance hole. All right, guys, I hope you all enjoyed the nine millimeter Terminator, AKA the world's most powerful semi-automatic air gun, at least from a production standpoint. I don't have too many complaints. Like I said, the buttstock is extremely fat, but I understand and why they have a huge air tank in there. The other thing I'll say is the magazines I'm not a fan of. It bothered me the entire video how cheap these things feel. They're just very flimsy plastic, they weigh nothing, and I just feel like one or two drops and these are gonna completely shatter. But I could be wrong, I guess we'll find out, and there might be good aftermarket options as well. But other than that, I freaking love this thing. It feels very well made, very high quality, robust, durable, just a tank of an air rifle. So I highly recommend it. I have several videos planned for this thing. I'm probably gonna do one soon shooting a ballistic dummy lab head. So stay tuned for that. And another one on self-defense for felons. Like I said earlier, if you can't own firearms for whatever reason, something like this would be an incredible choice. Probably number one on my list, actually. I would take this over black powder any day of the week, especially after shooting it today. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you liked the video, please hit the like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.